Hello, welcome back to the show. My name is Sergeant Cynthia Ramirez and I'm from 112 Cav. Hi, I'm one of your co-hosts, Corporal Kyra Pearl with 3rd Armored Corps Public Affairs. And I am your other co-host, Samantha Farlow with the Garrison Public Affairs Office. And you are listening to Fort Hood's Great Great Big Big Podcast. Podcast. And welcome back to the show. Today we have two guests with us. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, good afternoon. Yes, uh, my name is Major Travis Jones. I'm a psychiatrist on staff for the 1st Cavalry Division. Good to be here. Yes. Hi, and I am uh, Captain Jenna Lewis. I am the Brigade Psychologist for Blackjack, and I work in the Embedded Behavioral Health EBH2 Clinic. Awesome. So I hear a lot of behavioral health related uh, job titles. Is that what we are talking about today? Absolutely. Yeah. This month is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. So that we're here to talk about mental health and ways to promote it. And so that's something that uh, Dr. Lewis and I do every day. So we're, yeah, we're stoked to talk about it today. All right. That sounds awesome. What are some aspects of mental health that you'd like to start off with? Yeah. Let's talk about some ways maybe we can just kind of increase, um, just increase mental health in general. Um, so of course, uh, you know, I think a lot, a lot of times when I have patients come into my office, you know, I like to kind of explain, for example, like depression or anxiety, there's a lot of ways that can be affected, right? So sometimes it's more what I call like biological or stuff that's happening to your body. So like if you're not getting enough sleep or you're not getting enough exercise, um, or sometimes in some cases, even need a medication. Sometimes that's something that can affect it. But um, sometimes it's more on the psychological piece where someone's maybe your thoughts or your emotions are kind of um, causing you to feel maybe sad or worried. And sometimes talking about those things can help fix it. And so, um, yeah, sometimes I'll have patients come in and go, oh, I'm feeling really anxious and down, but I'm only sleeping two hours a night. And so addressing things like that. But then of course, you know, working for the army, um, uh, we do have people who exercise a lot, which is good. I always recommend that. But of course, a lot of our patients do that already, which is great. But sometimes that, uh, sleep piece or maybe the nutrition piece can be easy to kind of neglect. And so I kind of, um, talk, we can talk about that as well. Uh, Yeah. So I don't know, Jen, I don't know if you had any other thoughts on that. Yeah. So we wanted to take an opportunity to talk about a lot of the you know, frequent reasons that someone might come and see us and some of the ways that we encourage them to take care of themselves because there's so many things that within our control we can focus on like our sleep, um, our nutrition, what we're eating, what we're putting in our body, the amount of time that we're taking, you know, to recharge and uh, our relationships and the impact of putting an investment in those relationships so that we're uh, you know, kind of mind body doing, doing well. Um, and so the big, the big part, like major Jones talked about was exercise and, you know, a lot of our soldiers and, um, our families were encouraging, you know, doing, uh, physical training and PT. And oftentimes this is where I notice with my patients, they will describe that they're going to PT, um, but, it's really not getting them through or they're noticing a lack of motivation once they're out there. And that's what tells them that they're off you know, their, their usual baseline or their, their, um, their normal. And so we talk about how do you incorporate maybe some change in, in that? How do you add to your normal routine or what your unit is doing in order to, you know, get that, um, fulfillment and, So that's, you know, a a really big one um, that we see. And then sleep, right? A lot of times soldiers might think that they need eight hours of sleep in order to uh, meet, you know, their sleep need. And that's actually a pretty big myth. Uh, We do really well. Uh, the, The goal is six to eight hours, which sometimes, you know, as soldiers, you might not have that opportunity when they go to the field or... When they're, you I think know, especially staff in the field. duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we try to focus on when there are those, you know, times that are outside of your control, then what do you do to reset? How do you make sure that you're increasing the opportunity for sleep? Because um, it's very much, you know, related to your mental health. Uh, when you're not sleeping, 
uh, you're not getting that recharge. And we see the impact on our mood, uh, on our you know cognitive or our brain processing. Uh, we are not as attentive and not as alert when we don't get quality sleep. So that's you know those are really two very very big ones that might seem um, like easy one you know easy things to identify, but are very much they can they can be a struggle. Yeah, it's often a good place to start. Like maybe a, maybe it's an easy win if one of those two things is not working mm-hmm. well. Um, but then, of course, there's some people, you know, doing well in those things, too. And that's where other other methods kind of come into play. I love how you mentioned the fact that physical, what you're eating, your nutrition, whether you're working out or not, how you're sleeping, how those do impact your mental health. Because when I think behavioral health or mental health, um, I rarely think like, oh, let me make sure I'm eating a meal today or, oh, did I sleep last night? That's just not where my drain My brain draws connections. Sure, yeah. And even as a psychologist, I, you know, let my soldiers know and I let my patients know that when, for me, when I am off of my baseline, um, I, I, the first thing that I notice is my diet where maybe I'm going out to eat more often or I'm getting fast food because I have not spent the time, you know, that I normally would. Uh, meal prepping or going to the grocery store so that's a huge way for me to identify and so we you know we help our our patients and and figuring that for themselves as well yeah that is an amazing I as we're talking I'm having like a little mini epiphanies about like (laughs) oh yeah every time I'm having a bad mental state I'm always not eating as much or eating worse Mm -hmm. (laughs) um uh, are there any tips for how um, soldiers or or anyone, honestly, can take those steps to recognize that and then better their habits if they are noticing that that's playing into their? I mean, I think the first thing is recognizing like what is what is when I'm at my best. What does that look like? What are are the things that are within my control that I'm you know focusing on? If I really value my you know diet, my nutrition, does that look like the meal prepping the does going to the grocery store, is that something that kind of adds maybe value or um, that fulfills me? So like identifying that base, you use the word baseline yeah. a lot. Is that what that would be then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I'm kind of at my best, like what does that look like? Or when I'm kind of at my, my normal, right? When, when it's just, you know, uh, me doing well, stresses in the kind of mild range or everyday stress, like what, what am I doing well? I'm, I'm, cooking, I'm eating with my family, I'm spending that time, maybe I'm uh, going to sleep at a decent hour, Uh, maybe I'm doing some additional like hobbies like reading or spending time, you know, with my family, maybe it's a date night. So what are those uh, activities that I'm doing? And, And then if you know what those are, which some people don't, like some people don't necessarily take the time to evaluate uh, what are my values or what are the things that bring me joy, even though it seems so basic. Uh, but if you know those and you can identify them, then you can more easily identify what does it look like when I'm when I'm not. And then you briefly just touched on um, spending time with your family. Does our social interaction and our like relationships, how does that play into mental health? That's a great question. I think you know, a, a lot of times it's so easy for us to like be on our phones or mm-hmm. watching a show that we like. Like it's amazing what we can, you know, all the different entertainment options we have and social media. It's so easy to kind of be in our own world, right? But it's amazing how good social connections and I say good keyword, right? Like you can <laughs> hang out with some people who might not be the best for your mental health. And sometimes usually you can kind of feel that, but really those positive connections can do so well because it's so easy for our brains to trick us. Like when things aren't going well, you know, like, like, Oh, this really bad thing happened. I must be a failure. Everything's going wrong. And then you have like a good friend or a spouse or a partner or or anything like, Hey, you know, actually, yeah, you had this setback, but overall, you know, you're still doing okay. It's going to be okay. I think that's so huge. And even too, I feel like I see a lot of, I see a lot of patients come in like after, And like soldiers too, like after a breakup and like our breakup's always hard, right? There's no way around that. Um, But I think too, I see a lot of people who come in, they always had this really bad breakup. 
I'm like, oh, who are you talking? Who are you like talking about it with to like get over it? And they're like, oh, nobody. Like they were like my only support. And I'm like, oh man, you know. So, you know, of course, a partner, significant other, that's wonderful and I, a great source of support. Uh, but it, um, and but you know, no one human can you know handle all of our relational needs. It's all you know. It's great to have a partner, but also friends. And um, you know, not everyone has family in the area, so. You know, what are some friends or a support group or a gym or a place where I can like meet people who can support me like when I'm down and you don't have to have a ton. Like some people say, oh, I don't have a, I don't have like a million friends. Like that's okay. Maybe just get like one or two. <laughs> right. who, like, yeah. Start can, off small. <laughs> yeah. Start. Yes. Little goals. <laughs> Absolutely. Little goals. Start small and someone who you can like be safe with, who can like handle your stuff when things aren't going well. But like, hey, that's okay. I don't have it all figured out either. And so I think that can be super helpful as well. And having those relationships that are safe is huge. Having someone that can tell you when, you know, maybe it is beyond what you're carrying uh, that they can, they can help you through and is willing to say, you know, maybe you need to talk to someone else, like talk to a you know professional, go to behavioral health, um, oftentimes the soldiers that I see personally will tell me that that's the reason that they took that step. And it takes a lot of courage to walk through the doors of behavioral health. And for many, the longer you've been in the army, the more difficult that that may feel or the more courage that that might take because it may be the first time in someone's entire career. And what I often hear is that that decision was made after hearing a trusted friend or a trusted colleague or even a trusted leader say uh, either I've gone to behavioral health and I trust it and they vouch for us or they say you know you should really consider going in and and talking to someone and that makes all the difference so I absolutely I agree and I know um, whenever it comes to people who have been in longer of course um, the army is always evolving and recently we have helped destigmatize mental health but I know especially in the past um, there's always been this big stigma against going and seeking out help and being worried that it could affect your career or affect the way that um, you're progressing or how your command sees you and things like that Um, do you have any advice for anyone who may still feel those stigmatized beliefs about EBH yeah that's that's a great question you know and I think uh, the Army's has done a lot of great things to kind of help dispel that stigma. I would say if someone's feeling like, um, you know, oh, like I don't want to go, I don't want to be seen as weak, I think it's important to remember that, you know, no matter no matter if, kind of no matter what, we everyone in life kind of deals with, with stuff, right? You know, even if you don't go and see uh, like a behavioral health provider, you know, we're all going through something. I, um, it's you know, I always encourage my patients to think about like, hey, even if someone's not saying it, like everyone's kind of going through something. And, you know, of course, we all kind of protect ourselves and only show the things we want to see. Um, so I think, and in terms of career too, I think, you know, obviously there, I can't get into like specifics of like how seeing, yeah, you know, a behavioral health provider would affect your career specifically. But in most cases, like seeing routine things, I think, Army's great about it. And I think you can still, in, in, you know, uh, you know, support your career and um, get help. So, and I, I think it's amazing too talking with, you know, being in the army for a decent amount of time now and talking with, you know, lower enlisted and then even you know senior leaders and everybody's going through stuff. Um, it's, you know, feeling down, feeling worried, feeling upset is uh, affects everybody. Even maybe that two-star or three-star general, like, oh, they got it all figured out. Like, mm-hmm. everyone's kind of going through their own things. And so I think that would help kind of decrease that stigma of like, oh, maybe it's just me because it's it's not just, it's never just you. It's everyone kind of goes through stuff. And I'll add one of the great things within uh, here at Fort Hood is that so many of our units have embedded behavioral health officers like myself that are in the units that when the unit goes to the field, you know, we go along and uh, we'll go do PT, we do leaders training, um, and it's an opportunity to kind of have a face to the EBH, right? And so 
hopefully what we're what we're aiming at is that you're not walking into this scary place with these providers that are so out of touch but um not only do we have our behavioral health officers that are, you know, wearing the uniform and um, should be a familiar face, but then each unit also has civilian providers that are aligned to that specific unit. So they're coming down and they're giving classes and they're giving trainings. And so they're just one more familiar face. Um, And then, you know, what I've seen and what I've had the privilege of seeing within my unit is from our senior leaders down, they are very open about talking about some of their experiences with behavioral health. And they're very transparent about when they've sought help and how they knew that it was time to seek help and they've encouraged. And I think that that significantly increases soldiers' willingness to go out on that limb and uh, be you know so open to talking with us. I'm so glad you mentioned that there are also civilian providers yeah. um, because whenever I first started going to behavioral health, I did not know that. Oh. Um, and, you know, every person's different and every soldier's different and who you're going to be comfortable talking to or seeing is different. Um, I know whenever I ended up switching to a civilian provider, I, I don't know, it just was so much easier to open up to somebody else. Not saying that the green series no. are bad at all. Yeah, no, some people have that preference. Um, I'll hear people say, I prefer to see a green suitor or I prefer to see a civilian. So that's kind of a nice asset that we have. And, and not only do we have psychiatrists and psychologists like us, but we also have clinical social workers. And, uh, and we work with the primary care managers or the unit's PAs, um, physical uh, assistants, right? Or physician Physicians, assistants. Physician yeah, assistants. Yeah. We work yeah. with the physician assistants. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that, you know, we're all working together to take care of that soldier. So that's a, that's a kind of added benefit. And then um, while you were talking earlier, sir, um, you were mentioning the units and how um, everyone around us is going through something, whether they say it or not. So uh, a lot of our talk so far has been very self-centric on, you know, recognizing our own baseline and how to get back into our own mental health, uh, good, how to improve our own mental health, sorry. Yeah, positive um, space, good vibes, exactly, whatever you want to call good it. Vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but what can we do uh, to better recognize that in our friends and to be that positive social relationship for others around us? Oh, I love that. Yeah, I think... Well, of course, you know, the more you can, the more you can recognize it in yourself, I think helps being aware of how you feel. And because then in certain situations, you know, and maybe what you're doing at the time, and then you might be able to recognize that in someone else too. But I'd say too, you know, it's great to ask questions. You know, I think, I think a lot of, I think most people like, oh, I wish someone would ask me like how I'm doing. Like Mm -hmm. even a simple like, hey, how's it going? You seem something seems off or like, Hey, you, you seem down. Like, I think that can be super helpful. And then <clears throat> I think it's fair to say most people appreciate being asked, how's it going? You know, especially if you do it like in a night, if it's someone, you know, you know, um, I think most people kind of appreciate that. So, um, asking questions, it sounds, it can be hard, you know, sometimes like, Oh, I don't want to seem like I'm being too invasive or, mm-hmm. you know, what if they say, Oh, everything's fine. And then maybe I seem silly, but I think more often than not, it's okay to be like, hey, how's it going? You know, something, everything okay? And I think that's, uh, uh, I think a lot of people appreciate that. Absolutely. And sometimes soldiers and patients might share with me a bit of frustration, like that they've been carrying this load and perhaps they've either been waiting for someone to ask or um, they've, they've experienced the assumption um so we've all probably had the experience where someone says you look angry or you look sad and it's maybe it's so much more than that and they want that opportunity to you know maybe talk about what's going on um but when we make that assumption based on whatever the the body languages or the face or the nonverbals, that can sometimes be a bit dismissive or that can kind of shut down a potential opportunity and so um like you know dr jones was talking about asking you know how are you (laughs) like just how is your family how is life going um 
perhaps knowing those finer details of life. Uh, I remember when I was in grad school and I learned about uh, the difference in terms of relationships with other, you know, student colleagues and what makes a difference uh, long term for whether those relationships would, you know, sustain or whether they would last after school, right? Because we so often we make these great connections while we're at one, you know, in one place of life or at one phase of life. And then we move, we go to a new job and they can fall off, right? And when those relationships are built on the only common interest of right then, right, where all we're talking about is our job, all we're talking about is who we work with, all we ta- are talking about is just the one commonality. And we don't get to know that person as an individual. We don't know that they're married and that they have children or that they aspire for, you know, something else after this. And we don't know just kind of those finer details that makes such a difference in terms of the long term. And I think that that also speaks to then we really know when they're not at their baseline, right? We know when they're, when they're off, when things are not going well. Um, we know that this person has these certain life struggles, which like uh, Major Jones talked about, like from our highest senior leaders down, everyone's going through something. And uh, when we are not as clued in to their family and their circumstances, that can make it a little bit more difficult for someone to be willing, you know, to talk about what's going on. Definitely. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and then if we do recognize signs that either we ourselves need to do something beyond just fixing our sleep schedule or nutrition um, or whether somebody around us is off and what resources or how can we seek out help? Yeah, so there are so many resources that our soldiers, their family members have access to and so often are unaware of. So uh, the go-to is often embedded behavioral health, go to EBH. And I believe that there's a lot of steps before you know we get to that point um, for the vast majority of, of the patients that we see. So every unit and at Fort Hood, we have the uh, Military Family Life Counselors, the INFLIC, um, and so you can go, you know, see this is a non-medical resource. However, they are counselors. They are able to provide short-term counseling to um, soldiers, and um, that's an amazing resource. Everything is kind of off the books. They don't document. Uh, they're not taking notes. They uh, can see you, you know, outside of a just a clinic setting and so for many people that's a little less scary and intimidating uh, I like to recommend you know for the soldier that says I just need someone I can vent to and they don't want to invest in like long-term care uh, that's that's great go you know this is a wonderful resource for them uh, we also have the army wellness center so they do stress management classes um, they even have massage chairs which is like pretty awesome and not a lot of people realize um we've got the military one source so military one source will connect you for individual therapy or for couples marital counseling uh again it's completely free uh essentially you're going you know and seeing someone out in the community and um they you know connect you with counseling so uh and then of course we've got the embedded behavioral health clinic yeah i love those resources and that, that dr lewis was mentioning because yeah of course we have our embedded behavioral health clinics and I always tell people if you're in doubt come to our behavioral health clinic we'll tell you you know where to go or what's a good resource but i love those resources that uh, dr lewis mentioned because we do have so many uh, on post and even our chaplains are always like hey we'd love to talk to people too and they don't have to keep records and like hey even if you're not spiritual religious uh, or if you are come and see us they kind of they take all comers, which is great. And I always tell people to, you know, that, you know, worst case scenario, you know, you're struggling with thoughts of suicide or hurting yourself. We have our ER, our emergency room that's open 24-7. Um, there's always someone there if you're having those thoughts to kind of um, to kind of help out. So that's a nice resource, too, kind of in that worst case scenario. But, um, you know, a lot of these resources that we have are open Monday through Friday and during the week, which is great. And it's nice we have 
so many things available to kind of help help people. No, I definitely agree. I'm so glad you, I didn't even think about the Army Wellness Center. I've actually gone there myself. Yeah. Uh, they are, ama- especially since in the beginning, we focus so heavily on how your physical and nutrition and all that can be affected. They do, they help you figure out your sleeping and, and how to better that. Like, I, I don't know why I just didn't even realize that is a mental health resource. Cause like I said, I don't connect the physicality to mental health. Um, and then I also love how you mentioned the chaplain and the MFLAC, because those are usually at the unit level, like one building away from your company, you can go talk to somebody right then and right now if you need to. So those are amazing resources aside from obviously going to EVH. (laughs) And one of the things that we're going to be doing very shortly, and some of the embedded behavioral health clinics are already doing this, is we're going to have an MFLAC and a chaplain in our clinic. And so when someone comes in, we will be able to give them those resources and, you know, and see is, is this someone that you'd like to talk to? Um, and so we're just increasing the visibility of all of the opportunities and, re- and resources that the soldiers have and making it just as convenient and accessible for them. That is amazing. Well, is there anything else that either of you would like to share? Oh, wow. Ooh, we've covered so many good things. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, yes. Go for it. <laughs> um, does the behavioral health have, um, does that tie in with marriage counseling? It does. Okay. It does. And that changes, if I remember correctly, our um, child adolescent family behavioral health clinic. That's on the third floor of the Darnell Hospital. Okay. Um, I believe they are taking kind of, um, some of those referrals at this time, but okay. yeah, so that it, it sometimes that changed, but I, it, last time I checked, they're the ones kind of, um, so if someone those. doesn't know, they can just go to the behavioral health building and go and yeah. And even, you know, most soldiers, because they are very aware of, you know, where sick call is, they know who their uh, primary care manager is. That's an easy way mm-hmm. to get connected as well, because, um, they're more, they're, probably the most familiar face for most soldiers and they can, you know, let their uh, primary care manager know like what's going on and they can get a referral, whether it's uh, to uh, EBH or to for, you know, marital or couples counseling. So that's another really good way uh, to kind of open that door up. And then correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure the MFLAX and chaplains also can help with marital counseling yeah. At least at our unit, the chaplain was always trying to make sure that people came in before or after they got married just to check in because it's always healthy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the chaplains are pretty great uh, at being able to offer that uh, couples counseling. Uh, I, I believe that's a pretty big target audience you know, that, that they have. So absolutely. What other questions y'all have? Are we going to take some callers too? Oh. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, just for soldiers who don't know, um, do they need a referral to go to behavioral health by their leadership or is it? Like well, you can just walk in anytime during business hours. You can walk into what we call triage and you'll be seen and they'll kind of assess like, um, okay, what, you know, do you need to see a psychiatrist who can provide meds? Do you need to see just someone to talk to first? They kind of, they call it the triage. They assess like where do you need to go next. So yeah, you don't have to have a referral. You can just walk in. Okay. But if you happen to be in your primary care manager's office too, and can bring it up um, and they can direct you there as well. Good questions. I love it. <laughs> so social media, social media is great, right? There's so many wonderful things we can connect with others, share parts of our life. It's great. Um, but I think there, there can be just some caution, too, with using social media too much. I think, um, you know, we're seeing people's best lives. And so I think I see a lot of my patients come in and be like, oh, like I see all these people on social media doing well. It's like, yeah, but they're just posting the best parts. Like they're not posting the times where they're crying or they're really sad or they've had a bad day. Like no one posts that. Um, and I think even if you recognize that, it's amazing how our brains just kind of see – things and make assumptions. And so I think, um, when I, before I took this job here at Fort Hood, I was in Hawaii doing a child and adolescent, um, psychiatry training. And, um, part of my research there was looking at, looking at different research projects about like social media use of, you know, cause maybe like possibly leading to increase like depression 
and like teenagers and that, but I think it can affect adults as well. You know, just, we see these things like, Oh, everyone's life is better than mine. And our brain starts tricking us into thinking that we're the only ones struggling. And um, so, yeah, I think even if, and even if you recognize that, like if you're aware of that fact, our, it's amazing how our brains can trick us. So I always tell people like, you know, maybe social media is great. Absolutely. Like use it, connect, create content that that's awesome. But uh, just be careful if it's affecting your mood, maybe take a step back, you know, and make sure you're getting those real connections like with, with people in real life and, uh, and make, you know, getting outside to always, look, always tell people get outside as much as you can get that, that sunshine. So good for good for mood. So yeah, that's my social media rant. I, I go on it quite a bit, but, uh, uh, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's definitely important. Dr. Lewis, did, what were you going to say? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to social media and all of the, you've got the filters and the ability to put out our best selves, like you've said, and so noticing what the impact of that might be and just being aware of, staying also grounded in in reality and in those relationships. And one of the things that I always appreciate with my phone is it lets me know, you know, how much time I've spent. And so uh, when I'm starting to go more into looking at my social media and uh, whether it's just looking at YouTubes or, you know, the, the scrolling and I'm not getting that activity, that's, you know, another good way to to get back on get back on target for me so just being mindful of how much time we're spending um and diversifying it doing you know as much uh you know good things to to fulfill us uh, as we can of course oh my gosh of course (laughs) sorry my throat's all wonky today i know um at least for me, sometimes on social media, I'll see the opposite. I'll see people who are sharing those sad moments. Mm-hmm. And I just think um, it is important to mention to watch and make sure that what you're consuming on social media is not bringing you down. If you have uh, algorithms that are showing you negative things like I sometimes do, because I often have to log off just to get away from things that could yeah. trigger bad mental health. Oh, that's good. Great point. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think... That's uh, knowing yourself and knowing when it's time to kind of shut it down is is huge. And that can be difficult because social media can be a bit of a rabbit hole where you're just all of the videos and all of the content that can kind of suck you in and distract you from the outside world. And so, yeah, it's it's nice when you're able to kind of identify uh, this is this is more than usual or this is not making me feel good Mm -hmm. and and then stepping away. Yeah. And then I know earlier you mentioned that you've, uh, you were talking about training that you'd done for child and adolescent mental health. Um, If there are any families who may be looking into how to seek mental health for their children, are there any specific resources that they need to go to for that? Yeah. So I, um, we do that, that clinic I mentioned earlier, the Child Adolescent Family Behavioral Health Clinic. Um, they do see children of, of soldiers and, and families. That that usually, ref- they do have a triage as well, like so you can walk in, but they kind of assess where you're at and schedule a longer appointment for you. But you can also get a referral from like your pediatrician or your, your primary care doctor if you have a child or a teenager who needs some services. So we do have a, a great clinic full of wonderful uh, psychiatrists and therapists and uh, many other different types of providers over there on the third floor at Darnell who can help. Uh, awesome. I had to make sure I asked because I'm like the standard mama in the room. That's so. great. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Yeah, no, it's, it's great that we get to take care of our, I say kiddos. I mean, we have teenagers too. They're not, they're not kiddos, but yeah. Yeah, and after going through a first-time mom and – I was so impressed with the uh, women's clinic and all of the doctors that from the time that I, you know, initiated services and care to then, you know, following through with the pediatricians uh, or the the newborn clinic and then the pediatricians, I, I mean, they are so aware of the importance of mental health and checking on mom and, 
And also, even though I told them, you know, I'm a psychologist, they were awesome about letting me know what to expect about, you know, my mental health. And there was going to be some changes and uh, hormones are very much a thing. And they were just so great about letting me know this is what you might expect. And these are some changes that you might experience that might be out of your control. And this is, you know, the resources that are available to you. They didn't uh, treat me any differently than, you know, they would anyone else. And so that told me so much about just what how far we've come in terms of talking about mental health and talking about how to take care of ourselves. So that's really in good hands. <laughs> and then um, was there anything else that either of you wanted to add? You mentioned that kind of developing purpose um, piece, and that's so important too. Um, you know, we, we talk about resilience a lot in the army and it's sometimes it's easy like oh more resilience training but I think kind of the research points out that those with like a solid purpose like just developing a life purpose and I know you know most all of us have that you know in some form but sometimes writing it out can be helpful you know when life gets tough and maybe things are busy and it's easy to think like okay like what am I doing right you know where is where are things heading and writing out that life purpose can kind of ground you and then when kind of maybe you're feeling down or worried about stuff, just kind of writing that out. Like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm here for. This is the way I want my life to go. Um, that can be so huge because sometimes I'll get patients and we're talking about things and then we ended up talking about kind of like life values and big goals and they're like, well, I don't know if, I'm not sure if I have any. I'm like, oh, and then and like, doc, what do you think? I'm like, well, I think you have to decide that. And so, you know, that's one thing maybe a psychiatrist or a psychologist can't decide for you is, kind of, okay, what's your big purpose and maybe what are some big goals you want to head to in life? And But that can be so helpful to kind of ground you and get you through some of those tougher times. Right. So much of our work goes back to finding your why, finding your purpose, and that's a big question that, that we ask. And that might become the work within uh, therapy, that someone comes in and they might not have really ex- been expecting to take that turn, uh, but finding their why. And uh, when you know, within one of the the sacrifices that we make as uh, active duty service members is some sense of control in our lives, right? And that's when it's so incredibly important to ground ourselves in what our why is. And that will vary for so many people. Um, But whether it's your, you know, your families, your children, the the stability within the military that we're fortunate to receive, um, I won't have to, you know, question whether I'm going to get paid, I won't have to question uh, my the access to resources and insurance, and you know that I'm going to be taken care of, and that I'm going to be able to take care of my family. And so, grounding myself in that, or uh, you know, oftentimes we'll ask our patients and soldiers, "Why did you join the army? What was it that was appealing to you?" And and perhaps there's some mismatch uh, for many in terms of, or for some in terms of uh, the reason that they joined the Army and maybe the expectation that they had and then the reality. And so we talk through that and we talk about, well, what are the, what are the ways that you're going to uh, find purpose in your life? And that might not be solely in your service. That might be also in those other areas of life that are important to you and those values. So that's a really big one. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you both so much for coming in today. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This has been an amazing conversation. I just know that uh, it was so informative. Um, thank you so much. Oh, Absolutely. glad to do it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we had a great time. And follow Dr. Lewis on TikTok. At, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> scratch that last part. That's a joke. But thanks so much. Seriously. money and get special military discounted tickets to your favorite attractions like Six Flags, Schlitterbahn, SeaWorld, Disney World, and more. Stop by our Leisure Travel Services office located right here on post to get those tickets. For more information, go to our website at hood.armymwr.com. Have fun! Wow, my mental health is already improved. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so we mentioned the the women's health clinic um in this yeah. interview so make sure that you don't go check it out last week's because we also got to talk to the yes. two wonderful ladies of yeah. the women's health clinic i wish i could have been here i know we were sad that, that you great. missed it it so was many, a great so much information yeah there. last week's episode and this week's episode i just honestly so much positive information yeah. and things that like you should really know yeah so, something yeah. to look into Definitely. yeah speaking of things you should know <laughs> <laughs> it's hot outside it, it is yes. very hot outside so hot. Uh, please make sure everybody is drinking their water and wearing sunscreen i heard we had a little bit of a sunburn situation oh going on my goodness texas summer is living up to the expectation uh, let's yes. just say that i put on at least 20 layers of sunscreen for <laughs> oh myself goodness. and my son this weekend and we still both came out with sunburns oh boy Don't yeah because you, you guys did texas. yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> we know you because <laughs> <laughs> you guys did like a little photo shoot didn't you yes the, i had my maternity photo the blue shoot. bonnets yes. yeah we got it right before the blue bonnets went out of season oh, so it was perfect that. well good thing we had blair on from the fort hood sentinel not that long ago yes. to tell you all about it yes she was very very helpful you know the traveling soldier segments are amazing yes, yes. and speaking of the fort hood sentinel this episode is coming out the day before um, Brandy Cruz is leaving. She mm-hmm. is the news editor for the Fort Hood Sentinel. So we want to do a little shout out to her uh, for all of the hard work she's done and the effort she's put in. And it's going to be weird not having her here. So it really yeah. is going to be really sad. Is. Such an amazing person on the Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh speaking of the day that this is coming out <laughs> <laughs> it also happens to be somebody's birthday yes who could that be <laughs> I <wonder> who. <laughs> it's Happy me early birthday <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> it's me my birthday <laughs> well i hope that you have an amazing birthday oh, happy you. birthday from podcast yay to that's so sweet <laughs> get to celebrate my birthday with you guys yay. can't beat that <laughs> Love that. All right. Well, I think that is it mm-hmm. for this week's episode. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We had so much, so much fun today. Learned so many things. So um, we're going to close out the show and tell everybody we'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hood and Fort Hood Public Affairs production. The show's theme music is written and produced by Delicious All Stars. All our music is obtained through Filter by Song Trader. Have a question or want to share some insights with us? Email us at forthoodpao at gmail.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at USAG Fort Hood. And as always, Be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.